Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dietrich, and today we are test driving a 2024 Nissan Altima S. This is a base, base model 2024 Nissan Altima. It has the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine, 188 horsepower, 180 torque, and that is attached to Nissan's legendary Xtronic CVT automatic transmission. And overall, this is a very, very nice car to drive. The handling is good. The ride is smooth. The steering is a little numb, but it's accurate. It's almost as good as you're gonna get in this class. And um, it does do a good job of reminding you that Nissan endeavors to make some sporty cars sometimes because it does feel kind of sporty. You hear the engine under acceleration, but it's not obtrusive. I think that the 2.5 liter has plenty of power for this car, for the way that most people are gonna drive it. You can get a two liter variable compression turbo engine as an option on the higher trim level Altimas. I'm not sure that I would recommend that. I think this engine, the 2.5, has enough power for most people's needs, no problem getting on the freeway. And I did do a real world fuel economy test with it last night, and it beat its EPA rating by a little bit, even though this engine's barely broken in. So I was happy with that. I haven't driven the variable compression turbo engine in the Altimas, but I have driven the 1.5 liter VC turbo in the Rogue, and I was underwhelmed by it. So just for me personally, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think you need it in this car. If you have a serious need for speed, then maybe. But if your need for speed is that serious, then you're probably not looking at an Altima. So just stick with the 2.5. It'll do just fine for you. You have good passing power when you need to get around a Tesla. Goes through the curves very smoothly. This car has the uh, poor fortune of following, the last two cars that I tested were a 2024 BMW M2, which was an incredible car to drive, and a 2007 Porsche 911 Targa 4 with a six-speed manual transmission, which was also an incredible car to drive. So to do a base model Altima right after that, I was kind of expecting to hate this car just based on comparison, but I don't, I like it. It's fine. Well, there's a highway patrolman doing something weird over there, but it, he's not giving me a ticket, so I approve of his actions. Although I'm not seriously breaking any traffic laws. You don't really get any wind noise to speak of around 70-ish miles an hour. You do get some tire noise, but overall the cabin, pretty insulated, pretty refined. I would say the driving is probably this car's best feature. This is a base model. Its MSRP is $27,000 and change. And it's not very well equipped as far as convenience features. It doesn't even have Apple CarPlay, which is crazy. This is the first 2024 model anything that I've driven that doesn't have Apple CarPlay. Uh, but that was the way Nissan chose to do it. So the interior convenience features are very, very basic, but the safety features are more impressive. You do have the blind spot monitoring. I don't know if you noticed the orange light right there. When the last car passed me, it's about to pop on again because I can see somebody else coming. So you have blind spot monitoring, you have rear cross traffic alert, you have the 
forward collision alert with the emergency braking. You have the parking sensors with the rear automatic braking. So I guess Nissan decided to spend their, their budget for features on the base model on the safety features, and that's respectable. I can appreciate that. It is missing adaptive cruise control, uh, but of course you can get all that stuff on the higher end models. So if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get a little bit more features. Some people don't care about that stuff. If you've never had Apple CarPlay, maybe you won't miss it. If you've never had blind spot monitoring, you'll be very impressed with it. So maybe the base model's the right car for you. Yeah, I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the extra money for the turbo. I just don't. In this car, I don't think it's necessary. This thing runs just fine with the 2.5. It's a good engine. It's proven technology. It's, it's the one that I would recommend. The variable compression turbo engine in theory is very impressive, but based on the one that I drove in that Rogue, in practice, it's a little iffy. I would feel more comfortable if I were purchasing one of these with the uh, 2.5, I think. Oh, oh, electric BMW might have run out of batteries, just decided to pull over right there. is running pretty smoothly today. I don't know that I really have a whole lot else to say about this car. Let's see if we can muster any kind of speed through this turn with the prevailing traffic conditions. Not really, but... This is very... The chassis is very refined. It's very smooth when you change directions with it. And the ride is, de the, the chassis is very good on this car. The ride is good and the handling is good and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of trade-off there, you know? It's not good handling with a stiff ride or a smooth ride with bad handling, it's, it's all there. So it feels like a very modern car, which is a, a compliment for sure in this case. And I do like Nissan CVT transmissions. I may catch some heat for that because people on the internet love to hate things and CVT transmissions is one of the things they love to hate. But to me, the transmission, the Xtronic transmissions do their job very, very well and don't leave a whole lot of room for complaint. Their simulated shifts are very quick and very smooth. Uh, they tend to get good gas mileage for the most part, and yeah, it's a good automatic transmission. Long-term reliability might be a bit of a question mark, but quite frankly, long-term reliability is a question mark with every automatic transmission these days because they're all either CVTs or they've got eight gears or nine gears or 10 gears, and they're just so much more complicated and expected to do so much more than they used to do that, I don't know, automatic transmissions across the board are not as reliable as they used to be. And a lot of times they weren't that reliable back in the day, <coughs> Ford Explorer. So whatever. And you know, to be quite honest with you, that's probably about all I have to say about this car, driving-wise anyway. It's a nice car to drive, it's nice looking. Safety features are good, it's affordable. The interior features kind of let it down, but it's a nice car.
that's about it. I did do a full review video on it, so if you'd like to watch that, I will put a link in the description. And if you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them in the comments section. And please like my video and subscribe to my channel. And have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.